Greetings, everybody. Hi. Thanks for joining us. We are, uh, I'm Nobuko um, Miyamoto, Artistic Director of Great Lake, and uh, we are here today live. Uh, we're going to bring you a live workshop from Lula Washington Studio in uh, on Crenshaw Boulevard. And we are a little bit uh, having some technical uh, uh, issues, but um, we're so we're going to be on a little bit of a pause. Uh, but we're going to play some music. We want you to stretch and get ready if you're here for to dance. If you're here to work out, uh, stretch, relax, um, get yourself ready, and uh, you'll join us after you hear this song. We'll give you this song so that you can uh, stretch to it. Okay, bye. Let Fandango Obon is a gathering of three distinct cultures the West African, the Mexican uh, Songharocho culture, and the Obono Dori, which is Japanese Buddhist traditions. And each year, the circle is getting more and more diverse. As long as the energy is really good, it's a very simple to collaborate. And you know, everyone has their own instruments from wherever their country is. They all have the same roots when you really think about it. We're building an idea that it's a good thing for people of different cultures to come together uh, to convene in a way that's maybe unusual, actually, because they actually get to participate in another form that's uh, different from theirs, but then they can also see, oh, you know, th there's similarities about this, too. We want people to feel comfortable crossing borders into other communities. It don't matter who you are or what you do in your life. If you walk down that street and you see all these people right here doing this beautiful thing, <laughs> oh, I swear you're you gonna, gonna wanna it. jump you in. You're gonna feel it. Yeah. encourage uh, other communities of color to really deal with stuff about the environment. Uh, that's what this is about, connection to the earth. We're trying to instill in people the idea that they can, anybody can participate and they should. Okay, here we are. So welcome again. Um, I'm your host today for this uh, workshop, Dance Sankofa, which uh, Sankofa is an African bird that looks back, look at, looks where it has come from. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go on a journey with uh, Tamika Miller, uh, Washington Miller and Jahan uh, uh, Dembaya uh, and Lula Washington um, Dance Theater. And uh, today is the third of seven workshops that we uh, are doing that's leading up to our virtual Fandango Bone Festival, which looks like what you saw on the screen. Uh, and of course, we can't do it that way. So we, we're we bringing it to you online. And uh, one of the things about Fandango Bone is connection cultures and crossing borders 
uh, being able to feel comfortable crossing borders uh, with each other. So in, in, in making those connections, um, first, I would like to connect to those people and those cultures that of the land that we are living on and that we're going to dance on. And that is of the Tongva people uh, who have been uh, Angelinos long before for 3000 years. And as we do this, take that into your consciousness of the land in which we live. Um, we're also in this moment, uh, of course, connected to the whole issue of black lives. And uh, this week has been a very, very difficult week. <clears throat> uh, 200,000 people have died from in, in the US from COVID. Many of those uh, disproportionate, disproportionately uh, black and uh, Latino. We've had fires, we've had earthquake, and um, we've had the death of Ruth Ginsburg. But the thing that is probably the most on our mind right now is uh, Brianna Taylor, that we still have not seen justice for Brianna. So this program, we want to celebrate her life. We want to find a way to express ourselves because not only do we have to push for justice and truth, but we have to care for ourselves and our community, and we have to find a way to find joy. So what better way to find joy is to dance, to dance from dance music and dance with each other. So even though you may be home, feel that connection with each other, feel that we are moving together, feel that we are on this earth spinning together. Um, so now I would like to bring on, I hope, <laughs> if we have, uh, okay, we're ready for the interview, okay. So uh, I'm gonna bring on two beautiful leaders in our community, true treasures. Um, Johanna Blunt of Le Ballet d'Embaya and um, uh, Tamika Washington Miller of the Lula Washington Dance Theater. Welcome. Hey. Yay, hey. here we are. Nice and relaxed. <laughs> really? Here we go. So uh, here we are at Lula Washington's uh, school on Crenshaw live, doing something that has not been done before. And so, yeah, see, here we are. You look so calm and cool and collected. <laughs> and uh, so explain first before we start, both of you, just tell a little bit of what we're going to do. First, we're going to start with Johanna doing a little, uh, uh, doing a workshop. Just tell, explain a little bit what you're going to do, Johanna. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna call first Mobile Coach. Can you let us know if, uh, the, if I sound okay on the mic? Yes, you're good. Okay. So what I'm gonna teach today is a rhythm called Lamba. I chose this rhythm for several reasons. Um, the first one being that the theme, so we have a theme every year with Inside Lambo Bone. The theme this year is Wild Beast Return. And when, when I was first told that, I didn't understand what that was. I was like, wow, what does that mean? And um, it comes from Japanese culture, and I'll explain that it has to do with returning back to your roots, going back home. Wild geese, the image of the bird, I think, connects with Lambang because very many West African rhythms, uh, the dancers very often are imitating animals, right? Because nature is perfection. And we're working to, to be more like our surroundings, our beautiful surroundings. So a lot of the movement in Lombang is uh, imitating the flight and freedom of birds. And that connects with wild geese, right? The flight and freedom of wild geese. Yes. Also, Lombang is the rhythm of the jelly or the brio, which in essence is the history keeper or storyteller, which is a very, very important part of West African culture. They don't necessarily have everything transcribed. 
prescribed in a book or documented in a database. They have reels. They have jelly. And it's these individuals who you have to be born into a real family. So you are born and raised learning the traditions and the history of your people and share them through song, through dance, through music. And, All right. Um, this so, rhythm in particular is played to accompany the trio as they, they are giving, giving their history. So that also has to do with while he's returning home, going back, exploring roots and uh, embodying history. Lamba 100% embodies that. So um, that's, that's what I'm going to teach you guys today. And so, yeah. can, can we uh, pass the microphone to? Uh, to Tamika and explain a little bit of what you're going to do as well, because after you do your explanation, um, we will, I want to explain that we're going to have a Q&A after the whole workshop so that people, if they have questions, we can, we're going to, we can talk and have a conversation after everything. But after you do your, uh, so explain a little bit what's going to happen after Johanna does her workshop. Okay, thank you, Nova Paul. Thank you again for all that you've uh, been doing here in the city and, and giving us the opportunity to participate in the Bengal Bone Festival. Um, very excited to share today. Um, Jahan is going from the ancestral tradition. And what I'm going to do is help us explore that move that came from the, the continent and stayed in our bodies and in our psyche here as slaves, and then evolved through the room, the ring shout. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. The ring shout was also because they were slaves, and they couldn't have time to mourn, or they, they, they couldn't properly bury, they couldn't express themselves. And the ring shout was that moment in time to hear from any jelly that may still have been who had information left. The, the ring circle, the ring shout was that time to remember any kind of ritual that you still had left in you, in your spirit. But the movement was still there. Somehow, knowing or not, it's still there to be connected. And the ring shout takes us then to Juba. And Master Juba, who will talk about dance all over the world, not just the United States. And uh, that Juba circle is what we see Day when we see hip hop sites, when we see two people in a circle, two people into one, one person. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But it's in love. It's in love, but it's also a competition. It's also sharing, and it's also how can I take that step and work it? So, but that, that, that's the trajectory of it. Okay. Being from one place to another place, and we're moving forward to a new place. So, we're going to share that today. Okay, great. So, J Johanna. Uh, we're going to focus on you a little bit. If you move forward a little bit so we can uh, get a closer image of you. And uh, yeah, I want to talk to you a little bit about your family because in both cases of your mother and uh, Tamika's mother, you have, we have generations of, of, of memory keepers and artistry here. So I want to know a little bit about... Uh, how you started learning the tradition your Afri of African dance, and a little bit about all people's church that you that you are are uh, is at your center. Yes. Right. So um, so I have been studying, practicing, performing this culture and tradition since before I was born. I like to say my father swears up and down that when I was in the womb, I would kick on beat to the music, to the drums. They would play drums to my mama's belly and I would kick and dance. So I would say that I've been doing this before I was born. My parents, uh, I'm very lucky to have parents that decided to raise their children in this culture and in this tradition. They took it upon themselves to uh, explore their history, explore their roots. And they discovered the djembe drum. And uh, the djembe, is a very, very powerful instrument that has spread all over the world, but uh, we didn't always have access to it. The first thing that they took away from us when they brought us here on the stage trip, to put it gently, was the drum. One of the very first things they took away was the drum because they recognized its power. And so uh, my parents are among some of the first generation of people 
here in Los Angeles, um, not the very first. There's definitely others who, who have done it before, but they are still part of the pioneering group or generation of people that decided to take that power back, to take that djembe and to uh, take our birthright back. And one of the places that embraced us wholly was All People's Community Center. All Peoples literally embodied its title, All Peoples. The, the logo of All Peoples is faces, several different faces of all different colors, it's like a rainbow of people. And I grew up rehearsing in that space. And to this day, we still rehearse in that space. Of course, um, the current pandemic has complicated things quite a bit, but we are always welcome to work, to practice, perform in that space. They have always been very inviting and have allowed us to um, express ourselves and our culture whole, wholly, fully in that space. Um, all people, like, as I stated before, is also a church, um, but they've never been rigid about Christianity being it. They have a healthy understanding that there is a whole world of people, and which also means a world of different religions, a world of different spiritualities and practices. And we're very lucky that that we've been able to uh, share space there in that space. So that's yeah, that's pretty much what all peoples represents to us. It's, it's, it's a home, it's been a home to us and it's been a place where we've been able to collaborate with many different peoples and cultures. Oh, and you know what? I'm gonna take a second, uh, sorry to cut you off, to introduce my summers back here. All three Absolutely. of them also grew up in this culture. That's Kosi and Kosi, who are brothers, and that's Madasi. And I'm gonna say Madasi's parents actually uh, and his grandparents, his grandparents are truly among the first in, in Los Angeles, or they're from Boston, but they came to Los Angeles quite some time ago, and they're among some of the first generation to, to study this culture. Amazing. That's so amazing. And that you're carrying this on, and you and your brother. And uh, I just want to have, since we talked about the drums, I remember hearing you say that the drums actually scientifically has been proven synchronize heartbeats. Is that correct? I would, I'm going to go out on a limit and say yes. <laughs> scientifically, I'm not sure, but I, you know, there's some things that you don't need science to, to recognize as true. I know that it's true. Absolutely, it synchronizes with heartbeats. That's where it comes from. You know, art imitates life. And we are born with movement and with rhythm within us, in our heartbeat. And I'm, I believe that the drum imitates that, yes. So let's get started with your workshop. And uh, those of us at home will continue to uh, stand up and stretch and uh, and work with you and, and listen to the drums and, and let's go. Oh, you want sure. to, you'd like to first show the video of the, yes, uh, yes I'm sorry. So, the, for, for the audience who's watching at home, I'm, I'm sorry for those of us who are here now, but for the audience who's at home, this video clip that you're going to see is from a wonderful group called Miniata, and this is their version of Papa, choreographed by Fadina Sutton and, um, and Ayinde, I'm sorry, Fadina Sutton and I believe her brother. Um, they did a beautiful rendition of Lamba, and you can see the, the movement, you can see the birds, the flight, the freedom in the movement. And I hope that you guys enjoy it. It's, a, it's just a few excerpts. And we're gonna we're not gonna do exactly what you see on the camera, so don't <laughs> but this is uh, what we're working for. Enjoy. Okay.
that you had uh, an example. So don't uh, don't be afraid of what you just saw. <laughs> Jahana's a good teacher, and she's going to protect your body and uh, and enjoy. It, it's such a beautiful thing to see people moving through space because nowadays we see people in squares, and uh, and to see people moving freely through space uh, is a beautiful um, thing at, at this moment. So let's enjoy Jahana Le Ballet Jambaya doing Lamba. Thank you so much, Nicole. So I'm going to invite you at home and. I'm Gonna invite you guys here in the audience to join. Uh, I guess where where you're seated, you can stand if you'd like. I'm going to um, continue to use the microphone. I can, but first let's just shake everything out. Let's shake our arms. Let's shake our legs. Let's roll our circle one way and the other way. Roll our shoulders back. And, uh, oh, and if anyone would like to join me on the stage, you are more than welcome to come up and join on stage. Come on, ladies. Okay? But make sure that you stay six feet apart and bring your mat. The first movement that we're going to do, we have movement with our arms. We're going to take our right arm and we're going to extend it out to our right side. And we're going to leave it there. Then we're going to take our left arm and extend that out to the other side, right? So that both your arms are out. When we extend one arm, we step on that same leg. So we extend the arm and step on the leg. We extend our other arm, step on the leg. Then we're going to take both arms, reach up to the sky, and look up towards those arms. Then we're going to bring our hands to our knees as we bend. And then we're going to reach out as we give energy. So all together, it looks like right, left, reach, up, knee, out. There you go. Right,
guys the break, right? Now that we have multiple steps, we don't know when we change. Well, I'll see the drum on my feet. The drum is going to tell us when to change. Can I get the break? You hear that? Thank <laughs> you. 
So we just finished doing our two steps. From there, this one is a little bit more complicated. We're going to step right to the side and then step back on the left. And then we're going to cha cha cha. One, two, three. That's the right leg is right. So you go right, left, cha cha cha. And we'll reverse it. Left. Right. One, two, three. You go one, two, one, two, three, and left, right, left, right, left. Now, of course, you don't do anything slow, so you got to speed it up. It goes one, two, cha cha cha, three, four, cha cha cha. Don't think too hard about it, right? Make it nice and smooth and easy. Left, right, chop, 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 right, left, good. So what do our arms do? In the spirit of birds and flight, we're going to open our arms out on a diagonal like this. Like we have wings. We're going to close them when we step on the foot. Then when we step on our back foot, open them up again. So it looks like this. Yeah, try it with me. Here we go. One more time. Then when you do your cha cha cha, you're going to reach both arms up and look up to the sky. Slowly as you step, return. All together, it looks like this. One, two, reach up to the sky. You both together. Thank <laughs> you. 
another seven. Okay, I can have one for you. I don't know why to do this. Okay. Okay, that's our whole routine for today. We're going to do 
do it with all of our energy, with all of our joy. We're going to now add expression into the movement as we do it, okay? You guys got it? Let's try it. We'll keep the pace the same to give you guys, you know, to, to make it a little easier on you. But let's do it, all right? Let's add energy. So now we're, this is Tamika Washington Miller. And uh, I'd like to, Tamika, can you sit down with me for a second? Tamika, can you sit down with me for a second? Yeah? Before you start teaching. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Tamika, I've known your folks for so many years. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I've known your folks many, many years, of course, because I have my company started just a little bit before uh, Lula Washington, uh, Great Leap started a little bit before Lula Washington's dance company. And so through the years, I've seen your parents, uh, you know, we're all struggling to, to, uh, to do our art, to connect with our communities, and to try to raise the funds to keep going. And I've seen them through earthquakes and all kinds of dilemmas, uh, trying to keep their building and finally buying their own building, right? So it's been a long journey to get to Grenjaw Boulevard, right? For sure, yes. yes. So I, want, yes, I wanted to know what it was like. I know my son grew up uh, when I was teaching dance at Senshin Temple. He grew up, you know, sleeping on the floor, crawling, you know, uh, it was really his ho second home, or maybe his first home. So I wanted to know what it was like uh, being the child of, of Lula and um, and and growing up in this in this world. Um, thank you, Nobuko. Um, it's you know I was telling the the folks that were here with us earlier that uh, the organization, the dance company, the school. Um, and this building are, 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 are what I call my siblings, the, the triplets. And they were born when I was 10. And uh, ever since then, I've been helping to take care of the triplets. And um, right now, uh, it, the blessing has been that I've been able to work, not only not only grow up and learn, but to, to be able to travel and work with my parents hand in hand and to see them working together. It's been a beautiful journey. It's not easy. Right. to work with your parents. <laughs> it is definitely rewarding. It is definitely humbling. 
it is definitely um, uh, amazing to see their journey and to see that I can also have a path of my own. Yes, well, I think for them also, it's a comforting thing because after all the energy that they put into it, all the years that they put into it, to have somebody in their family to, to take forward and to carry all this knowledge and struggle and um, connection to community um, into the future is really a blessing, a great blessing. So thank you for doing that. And you're doing it for all of us, really. Thank you, Nobuko. Uh, I, you know, my parents, again, they have been a great example. And I've, I've grown up seeing people like you <laughs> um, and, and, and following in that same um, tradition of, of the legacy of bringing the family along, bringing the kids along, like us in that rehearsal, uh, they, they're going to learn something. They might not know that they learned it out there, <laughs> but they're going to learn something. Absolutely. So I grew up like that. I grew up, you know, Jahana and, and, and the kids, we were all there at our rehearsals. And, and mm -hmm. I think that's, um, I think it's important to the development of, of young people to have the opportunity to be in theater, be around a culture. So, Absolutely. Uh, I hope to continue. Especially in America, uh, I don't think the arts are given the uh, the respect and uh, funding that it needs to really do what it can do for for our children, for our communities, and to keep us healthy and keep us uh, grounded, and to actually help interpret the world around us because it's not an easy world to to live in, and of course now. It's even more uh, intense. I would say we're going through a very intense moment of reckoning. So the work that you and your company is doing it has a special relevance right now to us. It's teaching us, and I'm sure this workshop is going to take us places that we never expected. So oh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. so take it away, uh, uh, Tamika. Take it away. Okay, so today, you guys, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down a little bit. I gotta give you a little history. Uh, by by show of hands, who knows what the ring shout is? Okay, I see that there's only only a few. Okay, who knows about Master Juba and the Juba Circle? Okay, not too many. Okay, and and so okay, so my, my husband's back there. He's gonna help us out in a minute. Marcus L. Miller. So the ring shout. The ring shout, uh, I'm going to just read it to you, but I'm going to start with this. Dance has always been a healing technology and a means by which we can define ourselves. And that was shared with me by Naomi Dioff, the artistic director of Diamano Para, West African Dance Company in Oakland. And when she said that, oh, that this was chilled up in all through me. Um, and, and having this opportunity to share with you guys today the trajectory of, of, um, of our dance is, 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 is very powerful. So the ring shout is the earliest form of resistance that African-Americans embraced in the United States. It is an African diaspora dance form, which means it was created by people, descendants of Africans from the continent, was created away from the continent of Africa. It has, um, uh, African influences, polyrhythms, syncopation, movement aesthetics, songs, and artistic cultural practices. And you can think of the, the ring shout as an amalgamation of traditions from the Yoruba, Akan, the Bantu, Angola, Iwe, and Fon people of West and West Africa and Central Africa. The ring shout was done uh, because of what the slave masters were doing. They they did this, they did the ring shout because of how they were being treated. Um, and the, the ring shout was done late at night. So you can imagine if you were a slave, you worked from the, the sun, the moment that sun cracked, all the way to the moment that sun went down. And then instead of just going home, you went out into the back and you did the ring shout. So the ring shout was a space to express yourself. It was a space to remember culture. It was a space to um, to celebrate, but also to mourn when that happened. So, um, looking at some of the steps that we just saw in Lamba, we're I'm gonna I'm gonna we're gonna move into that in a, in just a moment. Um, I, I did want to make sure that you guys understood and remember what what um, 
what Johanna was saying, that the slave masters didn't understand the drum and they did not understand the language. And so because of that, they said, no drumming, you can't use the drum because we think you're gonna start a rebellion <laughs> and you can't talk in your language either. But they didn't ban the dancing. They didn't realize what was happening in that circle. So the reason why I brought it up when, 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 when uh, I had the opportunity to talk to Noble Call is because right now we need the ring circle. We need the ring shout right now. We need it. And uh, thank you. I, I thought that, that this would be great for us to try. And the steps aren't that hard. It's really a one kind of movement and you take it and make it your own. Some of the songs that we'll hear um, instruct you, reach down, we'll tell you what to do. But also you can make it your own. Um, so there, that's the, here's the connection. Ring shout into the Juba circle. So there was a man named William Henry Lane who became the Juba master. This man was actually born free, but saw and experienced the ring shout. This man learned the Irish jig. And when the white people and the slave masters saw this black man doing the jig, they didn't understand. They thought it was something else. But really, it was a jig. He took that jig and turned it all the way upside down and inside out, and all the way around, adding to it the cultural movements that were still left in the body from the, the slave tra trade, mid Atlantic slave trade. So when we think about Nancy Juba, who traveled all over the world, I think he ended up dying in, 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 in London at the young age of 25. Yes, very young. He had by that time outdanced all of the white men that came to uh, compete against him. And that made the world go, and that opened the doors to the menstrual seat. And, and, and do you guys know the menstrual, menstrual shows? Some people do. I'm going I'm I'm to encourage you to go look it up and, and be inspired and learn. But those, uh, that was how a lot of black um, artists were able to enjoy a, a better life, a different life, because of their, their dance, the spirit of dance took them all over the world. And so again, when when the, when Juba would be in these competitions with the jig, uh, it would be two people in the circle, and everybody else on the outside watching. When we look at hip hop cycles today, what do we see? One or two people in there and everybody else on the outside watching or moving with. And all of that comes from our ancestral roots. And uh, that's how we're gonna to connect today with, with uh, Lamban, the ring shout in the Juba circle. So if I could get a few volunteers to come join me up here, we're gonna do this real quick. We're not gonna take a long time. I am gonna encourage you guys to look up. Um, I know uh, we have, we do have some links that we can send to folks if you log in and you uh, register through Fandango Obon. Um, we can send you information. But I would like to hear something. As you guys are coming up, I want to, and, and um, Cesar, I don't know if you can for the people in IG land, but I'd like to see the um, You Got a Right to the Tree of Life song. We're going to hear that, and I'm going to do the steps with you first. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that first. I'm going to do it up. But I'm not going to do the song first. Because I'm like, find the space. We're going to learn the steps first. Then we're going to try some music. <laughs> Double K, we're moving on. Um, and I can, um, oh, Do it again. Do it right. Hey. 
because you are stressing. The spirit is called out. You might start off slow and mournful. That's what it takes to talk. But then the spirit comes to move and the endorphins come and dance and it's going to make you joyful and you got to go faster and you might even jump after the body. So we're going to do the first part and then we're going to learn how to jump here. From the top. And remember, there's never times in the wind shot where it's been choreographed. There's always a spirit preaching. You might stop with somebody else's spirit for a minute, but the truth is, in a wind shot, your spirit is going to want to be on its own. All right, come on to the top.
you're like, that's nothing. And when you go home, you just go back on YouTube. But you just see the steps. They recreate it. Go ahead, baby. <laughs>
I'm out of breath. How y'all feel? So, so we're going to sit down. We're going to learn a song together. Can we have y'all come up and join us? Yep. <laughs> Yeah. Hearing the song, hearing the rhythm. That's a, a sick thing. No, I'm all the way wrong. Four, four. Can you guys give yourself a little more physical distance? Just stagger. Keep your hands to yourself, please. Thank you. Woo! I'm to check my breath. But y'all seriously, it's amazing. So, we're going to learn this song. You don't have to this song is simple. Yes, do you need your words? Here we go. You need your words. So, we're going to learn a song. There's this one on your list that's called Magic Shot Shouters, Sign of the Judgment. So first the judgment. But that's what is all the Macintosh Country County Shoutings. Still exist. There are many groups in South Carolina, especially, who continue and on the Gullah, in the Gullah uh, communities, they continue the tradition of ring shouts. Many churches still continue the ring shouts. And you all, again, I can share the links of um, research that you can take a look for yourself. So this song, Sign of the Judgment, I need one too. Um, so these are not the original words. The Sign of the Judgment. Sign of the Judgment. Basically that original song is saying, if, if we see the sign, I see the sign in the fig tree. I see the signs that the horse. I see signs. I see signs. And it's basically saying what's going to happen? How are we going to fix this? How are we going to move? So I, we redid the work because we wanted to get them a little more connected to the deck. So I'm going to read these words to you. That's our microphone. Thank you. I need help. So, when it gets to the point of saying, yeah, Lord, time's gone now. I just want you guys to say to me. He said, yeah, Lord, time gone now. Yeah, Lord, time gone now. Yeah, Lord, time gone now. All right, so the caller, I'm not the only caller. Some of the dancers will call. That's it. And they will do their call three times. And on the third round, you're going to come in. So we're going to actually listen to the actual recording for a couple of verses. And then we'll work on our version. Y'all ready for that? Yeah? Okay. Fine and judgment.
All right, we're going to try this. Brother Marcus, can you can you call up and bring it in? Can we take everybody a, take a bow? Take the mic off. Take the mic off. Take the mic off. This is this day, all of this is an honor. We got to take it to the back and go to that. And I need to make sure that you say to me, I need to make sure that we continue to speak about it. For her children need to be arrested. Period. Her children need to be arrested for committing the crime of murder. It's not fair. She was asleep in her home. And she didn't deserve to die. And all of this, all this art, all this beauty, all this history, all this culture, we're beautiful people. And we are human, just like the rest of y'all. And um, and this is for Beyonce. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. 
This whole day, Brother Long will have been in tribute to Brianna Taylor and the so many lives that have not had any justice. Yes. And that's what the Ring Child has been about. And that's what the dance has been about. So thank you for helping us to remember. Can I get y'all, you know, there's so many names in the room. Let's just call out some names. Brianna Taylor, Joe Taylor, Martin, Come on, come on, come on. 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 The names uh, are so good. So many. So we got to do it. We got to do it. We have to keep the spirit. We have to learn to be together. And Fandango Obong gives us the opportunity to be respectful of each other's culture and to be together in a safe, loving space. So I'm going to invite you guys. Don't forget the links. Go back and practice the steps because we're coming back together. In November, right? November 15th. November 15th for the actual festival. And we'll be doing these dances in circles wherever we are. So keep in touch. So thank you so much, Tamika. Thank you so much, Jahana. This was a, a blessing to, to, to be part of it. I'm sorry, I'm emotional too, because this means a lot to us to break to break the silence, to break with freedom, with our bodies. And I see this ring shout as an as a ancestral cry. It's an ancestral cry that we're all connected to. And that, that, that's going to take us like the Sankofa into the future. If we're looking back at this, you know that we've talked about collaborating on something and then we really need to when I see this how we can collaborate and make Obon and Juba and 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 Ring Shout and Fandango into one circle uh, because we have something to say together that we can't say separately. Um, it's just beautiful to see your, your work. And with the children, thank you all these young people who have been part of this. You're the future. You're the ones that are gonna carry this story forward. And um, just like Johanna and Tamika are doing for their, for their family, you're going to do this for us. That your dance, your song is going to take us into the future. So it's so important what you're doing. Keep doing it. Um, if people have questions, uh, <laughs> now I can't even read because I'm crying, uh, but people have responded so strongly who are watching. They think it's so joyful. It looks wonderful, and um, that people are are thanking you for bringing joy into this moment. That um, so you know the fact that you could create on the moment in the present moment, like what you did, and people could just step in the circle is so beautiful and so meaningful to us right now, as we're separated for so many other reasons. The world does need a hug. That's what Lauren says. The world needs a hug, and that's what this circle really is today, even though we couldn't hear you uh, as well as we wanted to, we could certainly see you, we could feel your energy. And um, so thank you so much. I'm, I wanna see if I can read any of the, the other uh, comments. Uh, it, anyway, we're going to get together again, um, November 15. And next week, there's gonna be another workshop at two o'clock, but please join us. Follow us at Fandango Bon um, uh, on Facebook. And also we have a Fandango bon, uh, com, I believe it is, uh, our website that you can sign in and put your name in there so that we can send you emails uh, so we can stay ahead of, uh, ahead of the game. So the next few weeks, we're still going to have workshops. We'll repeat some of these workshops so people can see them again and learn the dances. Uh, next week, you're going to see a Muslim uh, uh, circle dance and, and chant. Uh, to, and, then, and then you will have Obon after that. After that, you're going to show, we're going to show how to make an altar for Day of the Dead. So each week, we're going to share something that brings us back to the circle and brings us back to our community in this time. So thank you both so much. Thank you, Lula Washington, for making this space 
on Grinshaw uh, until we can all be together again. Some of you are going. Are you going to start, uh, Demika? Are you going to start having classes here outside? We are, we, we are, we are going to be, uh, it's our community moves project and we'll be offering free classes on Saturday. Um, you can email the school at school.lwbt at gmail.com and they'll send you a form and you can look at it and pick what you want to do. We just and it's free and very, very low cost. Repeat that again. Repeat that again. Uh, school, school.lwbt at gmail.com. Okay. So thank you all again. Thank you for being in the audience and participating in your homes. Uh, this is a special moment that we cherish, that we have together, that we can communicate, we can dance, we can sing, we can shout in the ring together. And let's hope that we have this opportunity to create something uh, soon. Thank you, Damika. Thank you, Jahana. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Faisal. Thank you, Dan, for, for all the tech support that we had. And uh, everyone, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Thank you for, to our sponsors, uh, to the JACCC and to S Sustainable Little Tokyo, to uh, Artivist Entertainment, and the many other sponsors, the LA City, LA County, who are contributing to this program. Thank you. What, you want more?